walk into the room Everything changes Darkness starts to tremble at the light that you bring And when you walk into the room Every heart starts burning And nothing matters more than just to sit here at your feet and worship you We worship you, oh We love you We'll never stop Can't live without you Jesus, we love you And we can't get enough is for you, Jesus. When you walk into the room, the sickness starts to vanish, every hopeless situation ceases to exist. And when you walk into the room, the dead begin to rise, cause there's resurrection life, and all you do. We want you Welcome back uh, to uh, our Vintage City Group session. Uh, I am super excited about where we're at in this teaching. I'm also, and there's, with a, there's a lot of fear, maybe a lot of trepidation. Not fear like I'm afraid, but just a sense of um, maybe more of an authority on this text than, than uh, we've ever had. I think the Lord's really dealing with something for us. and. 
because of that, I want to I want to be very careful with how we go into this and just share that when things come up, if things come up that are really difficult, that's the right way to reach out to your city group leaders and say, hey, I really need to talk about this and this is bothering me or maybe it's made me angry. I don't understand this point of view. And my hope, again, I've been saying this over the last few weeks, my hope is to unmuddy the water, to bring some clarity to the water of morality as a disciple. What does morality look like in our day and in our time? And we left off last session talking about where sex is to be found and that it's really in a marriage relationship and a marriage relationship biblically defined. The only place the scripture gives us the right to be sexual is in a covenant companion relationship of marriage, one man, one woman. It's not to be shared prior to that. It's not to be shared anywhere else besides that. There is no, there is no um, exclusion. There's no uh, for orientation. There's no opportunity in Scripture for us to say, I'm different. That doesn't work for me. There's no, it just doesn't work that way. And um, I would be more than happy to sit and dialogue at some point with, with you and with your leaders about how Scripture builds this case, because I think it's a pretty strong case, but we have to have a great moral underpinning, in, especially in the city we live in. We live in a city that is pretty high-minded. I love Fort Collins, Loveland area, but it's definitely a city that has embraced a very humanistic point of view. And our job isn't to be aggressive and ugly. It's just to be morally clear and allow our lives to shine. So with that, I want to dive into this week's teaching. Again, Solomon says, drink water from your own well. We're in chapter 5. Share love with your, with your, only with your wife. Oh, ladies, we talked about that. Share, share love only with your husband. Why spill the water of your springs in public, having sex with just anyone? Clearly, we see with that verse right there that the intention uh, of, of God in Scripture is that our sexuality is reserved within that covenant relationship. And here's the verse. You should reserve it for only yourselves. Reserve means to pull back, protect, withhold. Don't share it with strangers. Let your wife be a fountain of blessing for you. Rejoice in the wife of your youth. She's a loving doe, a graceful deer. Let her breast satisfy you always. May you always be captivated by her love. Why be captivated, my son, with an immoral woman or embrace the breast of an adulterous woman? Now, most of my life, I could not read this passage without laughing because it was just funny. But in this context, there's a seriousness to it. And ladies, again, I want to just state for you, um, it, it is totally right from an interpretational point of view to sub in gender appropriate statements. So you could, you could say, rejoice in the husband of your youth. Let your husband be a fountain of blessing for you. For, for he is a loving doe. We could find something more masculine if you want. But, but the, the, you understand the concept. Here's what I want to draw from, from what Solomon's teaching, because he's really teaching us how to approach our marriage relationship. Now, if you're not married, say, please don't check out, say, this teaching is not for me. If you're not married, understand, this is the mindset we are to have as approaching marriage. If you say, I don't ever want to be married, fine, I just want you to understand. Biblically, if you say, I don't ever want to be married, what you're saying is, I'm choosing to abstain from sexuality for my lifetime. That is the biblical point of view. So the marriage relationship, first thing Solomon says, is it's a source of daily blessing. And to understand this properly, we must consider the word picture that Solomon has created in his earlier text. He uses water. So let's ask a question. What's well, just one of the obvious things about water? It's necessary for life. So if we try to live without water, we die. If we live with too little water, we see an increase in health concerns or a decrease in health. It's called dehydration. Consider how we use water in, in almost every aspect of our life. It's vital. And so if we take that idea and we superimpose it to this concept of, of, of our, the sexual relationship within our marriage, we get a picture that's pretty intense about what Solomon's saying. It's a vital part of your life. He uses the word well. A well is a supply place. Wells were dug as a supply source of water. 
Wells only had value as long as they could produce water. A well had zero value once it dried up. So Solomon likens our marriage covenant to a well, and our marriages are intended by God, please hear this, to be a source of sexual satisfaction for us. It's intended to flow freely and be accessible when we need it. Um, in our love and respect, we did a group for, uh, we, we taught us about a 14 month class, Belinda and I did, on love and respect uh, in the earlier days of vintage. In, in that teaching, the Lord had given me a pretty clear heart for a passage in Corinthians, and I want to just kind of speak to it a little bit. There's a passage in Corinthians where Paul talks about um, the frequency of sexuality, and he basically says this, um, Husbands, your body's not yours. It belongs to your wife. It's for her pleasure. Wives, your body's not yours. It's his. It's set aside for his pleasure. The two of you together should remain frequent unless you come to agreement, meaning both of you have the desire to abstain from sex for the purpose of devotion to the Lord for prayer and fasting. It's a pretty heavy teaching. And then Paul goes on and says, and once that, moment, once that season, that, that specified time of fasting and, and devotion to the Lord is done, make sure you come back together quickly, otherwise the enemy gets an upper hand in your life. And what we learn from this passage is this, Frequency of sexual relationship in our marriage is a spiritual protection against the way the enemy wants to work against us uniquely. So the enemy knows our DNA. He knows what we're weak. It's not all about men being um, sexually minded and needing to, to, to be protected by their wives. Ladies, there is a spiritual protection in your life when you're frequent with your husband. Husbands, there's a spiritual protection that you offer to your wife by regularly maintaining a sexual unity. Blaine and I will, will teach this regularly to young couples. It's the glue in your marriage. It's something to be enjoyed. It is definitely not something to be lorded over or withheld. That is sin, it's wrong, and it's dangerous, and it has to stop biblically. It is a relational covenant that we hold together we serve each other in this way. And that's what Solomon's teaching. He uses this word spill, which is to mishandle. We understand that in normal terms. If I spill the milk, I mishandled the gallon of milk. It spilled. And he calls this mishandling the sharing of our sexuality in any way outside of our marriage. Guys, I'm going to be blunt. If you struggle with porn, that's a mishandling. If you struggle with... with with your eyes being on every woman that walks by, that's a mishandling. Ladies, if you struggle with, with your thoughts being on other men, that's mishandling. It's wrong. We are taught through Scripture to discipline ourselves morally to focus only on our spouse. It's not that we couldn't see other people. It's not that we couldn't find satisfaction. It's that we are disciplined to not be willing to. It's the attitude we are to have. He gives us four quick things. That we are to let our spouse be a fountain of blessing. The root word is connected to the idea of kneeling and worship, like as a source of gratitude. We're grateful for our spouse. We understand God has put them in our lives as a source of blessing in the sexual area. We are to rejoice in our spouse. The spouse of our youth, it's an interesting phrase. So as we get older, we rejoice in the spouse of our youth. Guys, here's the deal. We all know we're going to get older. We all know we're not going to look as awesome. The discipline in the kingdom is that we are to have an, in, an internal covenant saying you will always be that person I married. For the rest of my days, I will value you as that person I married. You never have to worry about my attitude towards you. I will manage it. We are to have an attitude towards them. They are loving doe, a graceful deer, to be physically satisfied by them. That's our discipline as people. I choose to be satisfied by my wife. It's not on my wife to make sure I'm satisfied by her. I choose it. Do we see how this continuum lays out? The responsibility on me is to be healthy in my marriage towards my wife. The responsibility on my wife is to be healthy in our marriage towards me. And then together we share this thing. We don't lord it. We just say, "Here's the, I want to give you a great phrase. In your marriage, the answer is always yes. I know this about my marriage. The answer is always yes. Because biblically, that's what scriptures teach. I love this last phrase. May you always be captivated 
with your spouse. Solomon says with her. Remember, we're being gender appropriate. The word is to be intoxicated by their love. Do you see the idea that God is laying out through Solomon? He's a big fan of us having a really awesome, passionate marriage. If that area in our marriage is broke, we need to fix it. By arresting our minds and saying, this is what scriptures teach. Maybe those wounds are deep enough, we need to go get counseling. Great, go get it. It's a big deal. Because our morality in marriage, the way we handle our sexuality, draws favor from heaven or brings difficulty. And I'm going to leave you with this verse. I know this teaching is a little longer. I'm sorry. For the Lord sees clearly what a man does, examining every path he takes. An evil man is held captive by his own sin. They're the ropes that catch and hold him. He'll die for lack of self-control. He'll be lost because of his folly. You see, our morality is watched by the Lord. The Lord is watching our marriage. It is pleasing to Him when we live biblically towards each other and we protect the integrity of what He created. I believe the Lord wants the church to be loaded with people that are having a blast together with awesome sex lives because it honors Him because it's what He created. So I know this is a really large topic. I know this is something that hits, a, hits close to home. I know this is something that could offend, it could, it could irritate us. It might, you might just be sitting there right now going, I, I'm so mad, I can't see straight. You may be convicted by the Holy Spirit saying, man, I really need to deal with some things in my life. There's going to be some questions coming up on the screen. Uh, your, your leaders are going to decide how you guys handle those, whether you take them in large group or small group. Here's all I ask. Let's dig into this and let's allow the Holy Spirit to bring out of us the health that He desires in our marriages and in our personal relationships. Again, please, if you're single, don't feel like you, this excludes you. Your mind must be set on your life being lived the way the Lord calls it. I love you guys. Be blessed.